from Television City in Hollywood. The Jack Benny program with Jack's special guest, Jack Parr. Thank you very, very much, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our show. Now, first of all, I'm going to try and be serious for just a moment because I don't want to get involved in any of that trouble that television is now having in Washington. And I certainly don't want to lose my job <laughs> as an entertainer, and I don't want to be called in for any of these hearings. So in keeping with the new CBS policy, I'm going to tell the truth about everything from now on. As a matter of fact, I'm going to straighten out a few things right now. I made some notes right here. <laughs> <laughs> now first, uh, oh, here's something I wish I didn't have to disclose, really, but as long as I'm forced to be truthful, here goes. Ladies and gentlemen, I am not 39 years old. <laughs> No reason. No reason I'm not. The only reason that I am saying that I'm 39 because I was tricked into this, you see, on account of my very, very youthful appearance. <laughs> but as long as I'm telling the truth, I must go along with it. You might as well know that in February, I will be 43. <laughs> Without any trouble. <laughs> and now for my cast. Now, for over 20 years, I have led you to believe that Rochester works for me as my butler. Now, that isn't true at all. In real life, Rochester is a very fine actor. He has his own home. He owns a most expensive sports car. And uh, during the year, he gives about five or six lavish parties in his home. Now, I know that's true because on several of those occasions, I've worked for him. <laughs> <laughs> now we come to, uh, incidentally, he tips beautifully. <laughs> and now <laughs> we come to Don Wilson. Now, it is true that Don Wilson has been my announcer for well, for about 25 years. But it is not true that he is a big, fat man. <laughs> now, Don... <laughs> now, really, Don is not fat at all. Actually, Don Wilson weighs 132 pounds. <laughs> but before each show, we blow him up. <laughs> I've always wanted a fat announcer on my show, and, and air is cheaper than food. <laughs> and now, getting on with the show, I'm going to present my singing star. But before I do, I'd like to clear up something about him, too. Now, I've always led you to believe that Dennis Day is a silly kid who drives me nuts and who is extremely underpaid. Now, nothing could be further from the truth. Dennis is a brilliant young man, very smart and very talented. And I'd like to have you meet him, ladies and gentlemen. He's going to sing Dennis Day. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight I would like to sing Climb Every Mountain from the new Mary Martin show, The Sound of Music. Now, wait a minute. Hold it. Hold it just a minute for you. Dennis, what's the idea of coming up on the stage dressed in that usher's uniform? Once in 20 years, I didn't have time to change, and you make a big thing out of it. <laughs> what? I heard you tell the people I wasn't underpaid. <laughs> if I didn't have this extra job, I'd be as thin as Don Wilson. <laughs> Dennis. I've seen him before he was pumped up. <laughs> Look, he 
looks like a, a laundry bag in a nudist camp. He <laughs> does? Well, now, Dennis, that's still... That's still no excuse for you coming up here on the stage dressed like that. that well, you see, I did it on account of my girl. She likes men in uniform. You mean your girl knows that you're an usher? Oh, no, she thinks I'm a big shot. Oh. I told her that CBS means controller ballistic satellites. <laughs> When I'm late for a date, I tell her I was on the moon. <laughs> on the moon. And Dennis, I don't know your girl. I've never met her. Do you mean to tell me that she believes a fantastic story like that? Oh, sure. She even believes you're 43. <laughs> now, <what's that? laughs> now, Dennis, listen. Get rid of that silly outfit and get ready for your song, will okay. you? Okay. Right. Oh, stop. <laughs> Take back what I said. What a crazy kid, really. <laughs> How would you really like to have him ahead of our missile department? <laughs> hey, we might be better off. <laughs> Dennis, are you ready for your song? No, I'm not. Oh, well, hurry up, will you? Strack. Hmm? What? Strack. Oh, Don. Hello, Don. <laughs> this is Don Wilson and uh, Joyce. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Miss Joyce Davidson, our Lux girl. To see me about huh? Well, Jack, Dennis isn't quite ready yet, so I thought maybe this would be a good time to do the commercial. Well, yes. Oh, wait a minute. I see you're all, all pumped up, huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's your fingernail. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> now, Don, uh, uh, about this, uh, what have you got prepared for the commercial? Let's see. Well, Jack, all I can say is that this is probably the most important beauty news you'll ever hear. Oh, really? Well, I'd like to hear it. Go ahead. Joyce, something uh, new has been thought. added. Something new has been Jack, added. Jack, this is really exciting news. I know. Go ahead. <laughs> well, something, Jack, new something new and wonderful has been added to Lux Beauty Song. I know. Well, let her tell me. You said <laughs> oh, oh, no. yes. yes. The Lux that's in your store right now is the new cream enriched Lux with a special lather that actually helps purify your skin. I use Lux all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, wonderful new Lux has two new beauty benefits. Lather that cream softens your skin and actually helps purify away complexion troublemakers. I use it all the time, you know. <laughs> of course, it, it's, uh, you see, this, uh, the Lux has really done wonders for my skin. In fact, that's why Lux has hired me, you see, because I use it all the time. You can see. You can tell. Somebody. You know, Joyce, Jack will just do anything to keep his sponsor happy. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah. When he was with Lucky Strike, his skin looked like a tobacco leaf. <laughs> <laughs> it did not. <laughs> Watch it. <laughs> <laughs> now we're overdoing it. Wait a minute. Go ahead, continue. There are probably We'll never get off today. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Pardon me, I'm sorry. <laughs> Probably more beautiful women I'll get in off because I'm lousing up the commercial. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, and me. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, there are probably more beautiful women in Hollywood than any other city in the world. And it's in Hollywood that these glamorous beauties are thrilled with new Lux. Yes, and I'd like to add another word. You know, since I've been with Lux, ladies and gentlemen... Hey, peachy skin, when are you going to let me sing? <laughs> All right, sing now. Come on, let's go and let him sing. Will Oh. 
all the love you can give every day of your life for as long as you Gentlemen, we come to my guest star. If you're bothered with insomnia, he needs no introduction. <laughs> However, for those of you viewers who fall asleep before 11 o'clock, I would like to present a brand new star, <laughs> Jack Park. <laughs> Just, I can't tell you how nice it is having you on my show. Thank you, Jack. Well, you're welcome, Jack. Now, Jack, I wanted to say this. Now, look, this Jack. Thing. Yes, J Jack. No, well, this is what I want to talk to you about. We're going to get all confused, Jack, and I'm Jack and everything. I think that uh, as long as we're going to talk together, we should, uh, I, I mean, one of us should be called Mr. See, let's say the older one, you know? Well, that wouldn't do any good because uh, you and I are practically the same age. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Uh, how old are you, Jack? 66. <laughs> You're 66? I'm a Lux boy, too. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> well, anyway, really, Jack, I mean it. I can't tell you how much fun it is having you here on this show with me. Well, it's nice to be back, Jack, and um, I really don't know if uh, many of you know that uh, my start in show business came through Mr. Benny. It was, uh... Oh, don't. I mean... Go ahead. <laughs> Actually, it was Jack Benny who taught me how to walk and how to talk and stage presence. I, I don't know whether you're familiar with a great theatrical expression that, uh, that an actor's greatest pay is applause. He taught me that, too. <laughs> Every payday, I used to go to Mr. Benny's home and ask for my pay, and he'd applaud me for 15 minutes. <laughs> no, 13. You see, I used to keep two minutes for withholding. <laughs> but the reason I did that, Jack, is because I wanted to impress you with something. That is for an actor. That money, you see, Your eyes is are not blue, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll end up with a Jack Parr show. I, can see that. Well, Jack, uh, I wanted to impress you with the fact that uh, that money, uh, I mean that uh, that applause is more important to an actor than any material thing. Well, you certainly impressed me, but it was hard to explain to my wife. Mm -hmm. One day, I remember one day she says, "Where's the money?" So I went like this. <laughs> it made her so angry she hit me with the baby. <laughs> No, it's not true, and actually leveling with you, and you too. You have been saying for years that your band carouses and drinks, and if they do, how could it be possible that 20 boys could be with you all these years? No, no, the, 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 technically speaking, only 10 of the boys oh, are still with I see 20. 
No, well, I know, but you see, it wasn't easy to find a taxidermist who would do the job. <laughs> Well, he certainly did a lousy job on Frank Remley. Oh, no, no, that is Remley. No. Yes. Oh, your taxidermist made a horrible mistake. Why, what happened? There's a moose playing the piano. A moose! <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, it's his own fault for playing in season. <laughs> Well, Jack, let's get back to you. Now, I understand that you're going to be here for two weeks to do your own show. Is that That's right? That's right. I'm going to be here for two weeks, but I was hoping I could get, get someone to replace me and I'd run over to Honolulu for a little while. Well, that would be wonderful, Honolulu. I don't know how to say this. Yeah. I don't know how to say this. <laughs> well, I once replaced you. Why could it, is it possible you'd replace me? Well, I don't know how to say <laughs> it. I'll tell you something. I wouldn't do your show for anything in the world. Five nights a week, an hour and 45 minutes each night. Why, this is an art in itself. I, I, I couldn't. I wouldn't be able. You're the only guy that can do this. Well, that's true. But I was afraid. <laughs> no, I was afraid you'd say that. I knew you'd say that. And that's why I have my set backstage, and we could try it out. A set, the set yeah. you use in New York? We have it back there. We could try it out with your audience and we'd see how it goes. Here's a contract. No, no, no. I, I wouldn't do that. Oh, oh. No, no, no. I'd be afraid. But it'll look, be easy no, for you. No, easy for you, not for me. Look, it'll be easy for you because you've got, you've got Charlie Weaver to help you out. Look what I've got. I've got Dennis Day and a blown up announcer. <laughs> I wouldn't do it. I can't. I, I could only do a show like yours if I could have Charlie Weaver. Then maybe I could well, do it, but alone. I, I can't bring Weaver at such short notice. Well, then I wouldn't do I, it. I, well, I wouldn't. Well, then I, could, I, I would I not do well, the show. How, how do I know? Well, Jack, I can't help it. Jack! Excuse me. Tell him you've got Charlie Weaver. Weaver's uh, back east. Don't Is worry. Don't worry. Tell him. Go ahead. Tell him. Tell him. <laughs> We've got Charlie Weaver. Oh, did Dennis say he's here? He said he's here. Oh, well, fine. Then we'll do it. Then I don't mind. We'll no. go what? We're not going to walk in the set. Oh. We're not going to do that. We're going to have a theme, an introduction, like I have on my show. Oh, well, then let's do it. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> Jack, now, how do we sit? Now, I'm supposed to be you. When yeah, I do yeah. your show, I'm here. This well, is where you sit. Now, what do we do first? First, you greet the audience and say hello. And, you know, you welcome the audience. Like that. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Hold it, Jack. Well, it's time for the first commercial. <laughs> All right, I just got started. It'll only take a moment. So ladies and gentlemen, this is a 17 jewel, shockproof, waterproof wristwatch. Now, watch this remarkable demonstration. There you are. <laughs> this hammer can be purchased at your local... <laughs> now, what do I do now? You must separate the first commercial from the second commercial with a little anecdote or... A joke. Humor. All right, all right. Let's right. see. I'll tell me the joke. joke. Well, let's see. Oh, here's one that might be kind of good. There's a Scotchman was walking down the street barefooted, you see, and he was holding his shoes. Jack, yeah, hold it. It's time for the second commercial. <laughs> together? Why do you have to have the commercials together so close? I have 78 sponsors. <laughs> 78 sponsors? Is that good? It's wonderful. It would take them all about two years if they tried to fire me. <laughs> oh, well, that is good. That is good. Yeah. Well, let me tell the story anyway. Well, all right. Now, this Scotchman was walking down the street, you see, and he had his shoes in his hands. And he was walking, and he was barefoot. <laughs> Greatest piano player I've ever had. <laughs> so long, Bagby. <laughs> now, what do we do next on your Baby show? Baby pictures. 
Oh, baby picture. I love it. I'll be able to do it when I do your show. Yes. Will you do it? Oh, well, that's wonderful. We have these captions for these sweet little baby pictures. Okay. And it's all very funny. All right. Here's the first one. Drinking alone, baby. <laughs> Unless you're the house detective, come in, Buster. <laughs> oh, good evening, Mr. Murrow. You're a little early, aren't you, Ed? <laughs> Sweet caption on this one. The caption is, Bob Hope had another great show. <laughs> Let's see that. Where did you get that silly picture? Rochester took it last night as you were getting into bed. Uh, I don't want these crates. Listen, I, w I won't do your show unless I can have Charlie Weaver. Now, I want Charlie Weaver. Listen, I won't do it without Charlie Weaver. Somebody call my name. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Charlie, yeah. this is Jack Benny. Oh, Jack Benny, nice to meet you. Local boy. <laughs> Jack Benny, the famous comedian. Oh, yeah. well, why didn't you tell me? Well, well, Mama's talked about you. Yes, sir, saw you in Mount 90 at the Crawdad Room at Snyder Swamp. <laughs> Pleasure. Gee, what a handshake. I felt better muscles than a pound of liver. What's wrong with my handshake? Well, Sonny, let's put it this way. If you were locked in a barn with a milking cow, you'd starve to death. Hey! Hey! Oh, I, I hear bring... that. Yeah, what would you say, honey? I didn't bring you here to insult Mr. Benny. Oh, well, I'm Sit terribly down. sorry, Mr. B... Say... Did anybody ever tell you you look like Leonard Box? <laughs> Leonard Box? No. Hmm. Are you sure you're not related to Leonard? No, 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 not at all. You got the same hangdog eyes. <laughs> what? No, no, I, I don't know. No boxes in your family? No boxes in my family. No boxes at no. all. Well, how do you carry out your rubbish? <laughs> oh, oh, I've got a seizure. <laughs> I'm doing a, te a telethon. We got to raise some money for new fire equipment. The stuff they got now is just a disgrace. Pretty bad, eh? Oh, yeah. There were... Well, I'll tell you what happened. Last week, the firehouse went on fire and the hose wouldn't reach. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Burned the whole thing down. Lost the mascot and everything. Oh, well, that's... Oh, it was terrible. It was one of the saddest moments of my life. I can remember it now. There was Wallace Swine reading the eulogy, and Gomar Cool, he was a man. under false pretenses. That's it. I wanted Charlie Weaver, and you got me a crazy usher. Now, listen here. This is your fault, too, you know? You hit me, and I'll tell Mama. Oh, stop. If you think I'm going to work with him, you're crazy. Hit the music. How can they hit the music? They're stuck. Not all. Oh, well. <laughs> A wonderful job as Charlie Weaver. Yeah, thank you, honey. <laughs> <laughs> so, it looks like Leonard Box. <laughs> Jack, Jack, I, I want to tell you, you were, it's so nice having you. You were just wonderful. If I was so wonderful, why don't you pay me? <laughs> <laughs> What's that for? You can keep the money, honey. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. 
Ladies and gentlemen, next Sunday night, be sure to watch the, jo uh, the George Goebel Show, which is uh, sponsored by Stripe, uh, the Stripe Red and White Toothpaste. And I'll be back in two weeks when my guests will be my entire fan club from Pasadena, California. <laughs> you mustn't miss it. And now, in keeping with the new CBS policy, we want to tell the truth. We want to show our viewers our live audience, if you please. This is Jack again. Now stay tuned for What's My Line on most of these stations. See, I wonder if they'd ever guess that I'm a violinist. The Jack Bennett program will return in two weeks. Next week, be sure to watch the George Global Show as guest Eve Arden brought to you by Stripe. The Jack Benny Program is a J&M production. <laughs> <laughs>